I'm Connie Hornbaker. Um, I've worked for Ericsson Aircrane for about 12 and a half years. Um, I'm the program manager for the, all of the programs that we, the, the projects that we have in Concerto. We're uh, the largest owner operator of the helicopters that we have the rights to manufacture. Um, we own 18 and own and operate 18 of these helicopters. We sold four to Italy and that's kind of where this whole process kicked off for us was to try to figure out how we could build three helicopters at the same time and deliver them all at once. That didn't work out so well. Um, we also have uh, three different FAA certificates. We uh, hold a repair station certificate, which gives us the MRO, the manufacturing repair and overhaul, or the maintenance repair and overhaul um, capabilities to be able to uh, work on all of the components that go on these helicopters. We have the type certificate, which is the design rights that we purchased from Sikorsky about 25 years ago. And we also have the, now we have a manufacturing certificate, um, full, full production certificate, so we'll be able to actually do the manufacturing from scratch. We have 600 employees worldwide, and most, about half of those employees are probably deployed at any given time, or they're on their time off. So there's only about 300 of us, I'd say, out of the Central Point office that do the maintenance, repair, overhaul, engineering, and, and everything that we have to do to keep these helicopters flying. Our projects are aircraft manufacturing, um, and that's where we started this off at, was, was in that arena. And then we uh, brought in the engineering group, and we started to do uh, projects with them because we weren't seeing the throughput that we needed out of engineering. Uh, to keep up with, with uh, what we were doing in manufacturing. Our challenges, well, we sold some aircraft and we promised that we'd deliver them in a shorter period of time than what was realistic. We uh, also gained a higher level of FAA oversight during this process, which meant that we uh, had to have a little bit higher um, standards as far as our paperwork and, and that type of stuff. And we had no project plans. So we were just a get her done company. <laughs> uh, see, some of you, same boat. Um, and we had major communications breakdowns. Everybody thought that everybody else knew what they were supposed to be doing and really nobody, nobody knew what anybody was doing and nobody was driving the boat. So. We had some, some huge challenges to overcome. We also had technolo technological challenges. Um, on the upper right-hand side of the screen, you can see the 1960s analog cockpit, 50s and 60s technology, what they call steam gauges. That's what's in the helicopters. When we sold these helicopters to Italy, Italy wanted flat panels in digital, which we hadn't designed yet. But we were going to deliver it. So we uh, hired an extra engineering firm to help us out to get the, uh, the flat panels and all of the electronics that went with it um, certified by the FAA so that we could install it and deliver it. And not only did we have to have it approved by the FAA because it was going to a foreign country, we also had to have their FAA, which is ENAC, approve it as well. So it was a uh, process to get it all done in the short amount of time that, that it took us to actually do it. Um, in 2004, we implemented critical chain um, in just the last half of the year. As you can see, we only had three projects total. Um, we were in crisis mode. And uh, with the implementation so late in the year, we only wrote uh, two project plans for aircraft and one for a uh, fire tank installation. The fire tank installation is the one that we finished on time. The two aircraft were late. In 2005, we continued with our uh, projects in the hangar, aircraft, fire tanks, and aircraft assemblies. And we started project planning with engineering in June of 2005, which increased the quantity of projects in the pipeline. 
In 2006, we started seeing results of production and engineering working together and started to gain some momentum. So we actually finished more projects on time. We now have robust project plans and we're refining our processes and improving communications which has allowed us a significant increase in the quantity of projects that are being completed on time. So you can see here today we've got 76 projects that we've finished and 63 of them are now on time. Percentage wise, the first year we only finished 33% of the projects on time. The second year, we actually finished 68% of the projects on time, and most of those projects were still in the, the hangar, in our production side. <clears throat> we had just started to bring engineering on board during that year. In, in uh, 2006, we brought more engineering projects in, and we had a change in leadership in that department and we struggled with defining the, um, the drum in engineering. Um, the director's feeling was that the drum shouldn't be somebody that only costs them $10 an hour, it should be somebody that costs them $50,000 a year. So he didn't understand why the engineers weren't the drum, why it was one one department or one area that only had one or two employees when he had 50, you know, 15 engineers. But all of the engineering work had to funnel through those two employees. So once we, uh, once we overcame that hurdle and we got the correct drum identified and we started actually moving projects through the department to completion, then our uh, completion rate went up significantly. The results that we've had is that we've, we've increased our on-time deliveries <clears throat> from 33% to 80, 82% in a little over three years. We now are working on the right things at the right time. Again, the important versus urgent. We know what's important, we know what we need to work on, and the urgent stuff, if it's not important, may have to wait. Priorities for projects are set. Um, based on business decisions and we have continuous improvement or involvement of our upper management. When we pipeline projects, our upper management is in the room. They see what the impact is of pipelining that project on the organization. Um, if they feel like the priority of the project needs to be higher than what we've loaded it, we can push it in there, but then they see what else pushes out and they have to, to understand that and accept it when we do that. Um, using resource loading information, our resource managers have been able to justify personnel requirements and allocate resources appropriately. We pool our resources um, and then we, uh, we also have a parent-child relationship where we have a pool of, of general uh, mechanics. Some of those general mechanics can do limited journeyman type work and a few of them can do journeyman type work. So as we make those parent-child relationships, we have a large pool of general mechanics because all of them can do general work, but then we go into the, to the more specialized work. And as you assign your resources, or as we assign our resources anyway, we try to assign the lowest level of resource required to, to do the job. So we don't assign journeyman electrician or journeyman sheet metal workers to every job if they're not required. Um, we've doubled our throughput without increasing our staffing significantly. In general, our working process has decreased instead of trying to complete three aircraft at one time on the same date. Now we have staggered our delivery schedule based on our drum resource. Future challenges for us, what we found in, in our manufacturing side was that uh, our biggest challenge was not in putting the helicopter together. Our biggest challenge was in having the parts to be able to put the helicopter together. Our supply chain hadn't caught up with where we were in manufacturing. We increased our throughput, but then 
we didn't have parts to support that, that increased momentum. So we've had to go a little bit backwards and, and get into our supply chain in some instances and, and uh, try to figure out how we can stabilize our material availability so that we can have full kits and have the e equipment, personnel, parts, whatever it is that's required, ready when the job is ready to start.